There's something about this apartment, I don't know what it might be, that inspires me to start this video as one of these kids these days are so much different than in my time. So that's what we're gonna do with an assumption that people are more and more risk averse these days, that they avoid rejection, they avoid anything that could really go wrong, hearing the no, having a big failure. Now, I don't know if that's true at all. It seemed like an interesting way to start the video, but I would think there's a move in that direction because in older times, you didn't have the ability to reach your goal without risking failure and rejection. Let's take something as simple as teenage boys and sex. Just probably demonetize the video with those two terms, but that's okay, let's keep going. I don't live off ad revenue. If you think about being a teenage boy in the 1960s, 30s, any other time in history probably, I'm not a historian, don't come at me with claims of whatever different historical periods and justices involved. But if you think generally back in the day, if you wanted to not die a virgin and to even just see a breast, you would be required to risk rejection and to talk to someone who could break your heart. You would risk embarrassment, failure, a big no, heartbreak, all kinds of things. But eventually you would do that because otherwise you would die alone and certain hormones would build up in your body to the point where at a certain point you just explode and probably die. So that was your option, right? Everyone eventually got over that. Or I should say most people there, I'm sure there are people who didn't. But what our modern society has done very well is create a lot of comfort zone and a lot of things that can alleviate our natural motivations, let's say, right? When it comes to love, romance, dating, I mean, the obvious one is pornography, but of course, online dating is also totally moving in that direction of minimizing rejection. And at the very least, if you are rejected, it's not nearly as painful, it's just a text you get, right? So where at other times in history, you would have this fear and then you just face it because your peers were facing it and you were motivated to face it and you didn't have any other options, so you would face your fear, then you would realize like, hey, that wasn't that bad, I'm still standing here, life goes on. And then you'd face another fear and another fear. You know, in my 20s, I faced a bunch of fears because I was tired of being scared of things and being anxious all the time and all that. So I got a motorcycle license. I went skydiving. I walked on burning coals and all these sorts of things too. And what it did is it trained my unconscious that, hey, I'm scared of this thing, but then I do it and then I'm still alive. So in the future, when I was scared of something, I was more likely to do it. And if you look back, you know, if I look back on my life, I see a lot of times where I did face a fear and then managed to move forward and keep going, like whether it was moving to Costa Rica or starting a coaching business or a writing business or any number of things, publishing my first book, right? I'm pretty convinced that if I hadn't taken on some obvious physical fears first and trained myself that, hey, that's not so bad, you'll go on to live another day, that I may not have been able to take on some of those uh, bigger, more psychological fears. So this is becoming a problem for a lot of people, I think, because if you have been able to get by in your comfort zone for many, many years, I mean, everything from food delivery to online dating to you know just socializing online without even having to face some awkward conversations at a party or something like that, it becomes harder and harder to actually risk anything. And I think generally our tolerance goes lower and lower. And something I was sharing with a client the other day was that if you're not risking failure, and if you're not risking rejection, your standards are too low, that your expectation for your own life is far too low. Assuming you're single, you're out on the prowl, if every stranger you talk to and ask out says yes, probably set your sights a little too low. If every job you apply for accepts you right away, 
you've maybe set your sights a little low. If when you share your price with your clients, every single one says yes right away, you're probably not charging enough. If you're not risking and facing rejection or failure, you're simply just working within a much lower standards that you've created for yourself out of this fear of rejection. And this isn't just something that we have to deal with once. We always have to deal with this battle. You know, as I'm filming this video, I'm thinking to myself a little bit like, hey Dan, are you being a hypocrite here? And in ways I am, because the same way I face fears in my 20s, I do not do now. Now I've built a lot of higher standards in my life, but then the box I've built of higher standards, I'm mostly living within if I'm honest. And it makes me think, and I think this is true for most of us, wherever we end up becomes comfortable until we push through to that next level, until we force ourselves to do something new. It's just human nature is we want to be comfortable. We don't want to be rejected. We don't want to fail, of course, right? These seem on the surface like really bad things and they're wired into us as things that we do want to avoid. So wherever you are in life, whether you're 20 and just starting out or whether in your 40s or 50s, your tendency is going to be to avoid failure and to avoid rejection. And what I would suggest doing is going out of your way to find opportunities to find rejection, to find some failure. Now, maybe you don't wanna mix this up in your business, right? Maybe your business is running really smooth and you're like, why would I just potentially risk everything? Cool, why don't you try stand-up comedy, improv acting, take a painting class, try something new that risk looking stupid, that risk you being the worst in the class or facing some kind of failure. This is a muscle like so many things, how you act in one area of your life is how you're going to act in other areas. So if right now you're never facing rejection, you're never very afraid anymore, then find somewhere that you can be afraid and then power through that and see, hey, that doesn't hurt me. And what you'll probably find is that in other areas of your life, you start to be a lot more open to other possibilities and bigger challenges. In the comments below, let me know if this has ever happened to you, where you found yourself falling into sort of a comfort zone where you just weren't really pushing yourself or experimenting the same way as you used to. Let me know that in the comments below. If you are new to the channel, my name is Dan. This is Dreams Around the World. I publish new videos every week helping you become the best version of yourself and create the most awesome life possible for you and those you love. So hit the subscribe button, the bell, that whole jazz, and I will catch you in the next video soon. One last thing, if you're an ENFP who loves being told how absolutely awesome you are and why you are the best in the world, well, head over to dreamsaroundtheworld.com forward slash ENFP training and you can get my free training series for ENFPs where the first email is a pep talk. You'll see the subject line in your inbox, ENFPs are awesome. After you read it, reply to the email, email me back and let me know what one of your favorite things to do is. See you in your inbox.